Hi, this is Reasons Are Several, episode number 189. Uh, my name is Matt. With me is Neil. How's it going, Neil? It's going well, Matador. How are you? I'm pretty good. I keep forgetting to call you Dean. Got to call oh, you that that's anymore. right. <laughs> how, was, uh, how was Thanksgiving? It was great. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> it wasn't ruined at all by anything. It was just fantastic. Nice, very no, nice. It was, yeah. I, I'm assuming it went well. I hope so. Yeah. I probably, I probably ate a lot. You probably didn't. You never know. I mean, we don't know <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, right. We just don't know. <laughs> Can we talk about your uh, other podcast for a moment? Uh, would you like to talk about Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks, the podcast, or Halos and Heathens, the vlog? Not the vlog so much, okay. although I love that. And yes. I'm trying to think if, uh, if you've released a, an episode this week. I mean, we need to get on that. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, I no, I'm talking about episode 192 mm-hmm. of your show, mm-hmm. and you were talking about this bourbon drink, and I just need a little oh, clarification yes. on this. Sure, sure. Can you explain to me what's in this bourbon drink? Because from, yes. from what I recall you saying, it was like... There's two different types of chocolate chips in it. There's some mm-hmm. like milk in it. Mm-hmm. Tell me what's in this. Okay. Uh, well, for, let me just start by saying thank you for mentioning the podcast and the blog, madam. I'm happy to be on and talk about it. Yes. Secondly, <laughs> uh, we are going to make an actual uh, vlog on Halos and Heathens of us actually making the drink oh, okay. and drinking it. And I would suggest everyone goes checks out the vlog at halosandheathens.com. Well, yeah, there too. Doesn't that redirect? It does. It should. I don't know yeah, what's going whatever. on anymore. Okay. You can also go to darkangelsandprettyfreaks.com where you can click and get to this show, Reasons Are Several, mm-hmm. as well as Halos and Heathens. Perfect. Freaking, it's one-stop shopping. And I'm by sorry, the way, Matt, what, what was your question again? You properly interrupted <laughs> me because you know what I should say? <laughs> what? Do you want to tweet at us while you're listening to our fine there you show? Go. You can. There you, go. you can find us on Twitter at Reasons Are and Neil is at Angels Freak 7. So please reach out to us if you uh, if you have something to say about our show. And this show is a show that it's actually about talking about my other shows. <laughs> exactly. All we, do. <laughs> all we do is talk about other podcasts. It's That's like it. a total gossip column. Yeah. Okay. So so it is a hot chocolate with bourbon, the Frangelico, and bacon. But you make the hot chocolate yourself. You don't buy store-bought hot chocolate. So there's the b- bacon grease that you mix with a little bit of cornstarch to so it doesn't Congeal. congeal is that what i'm looking for uh-huh, yeah. and then the the base of the hot chocolate is uh bitter bittersweet chocolate chips milk chocolate chocolate chips which annalise and i when we were in the store were like why didn't they just go semi-sweet chocolate chips because that's better in the middle. so uh yeah. cocoa powder and milk so that's the hot chocolate and then oh, to that you add bourbon and frangelico oh my god and then and the bacon have grease before? never have okay and i'm worried cream. about you guys oh my god can you? I mean, this is going to be the day after Thanksgiving, which means my stomach's going to be a wreck anyway. <laughs> and this is how we're going to start. Oh, and then we're getting up because we get up for Black Friday super early, get right. our coffee drinks, do our shopping, then come and make this freaking thing. Well, you might need to live stream this just in case something goes wrong. I, yeah, I might. So somebody can call the call. police. Yeah, you know, oh, it's my probably God. not a bad idea. It it was making my stomach tense up listening to you guys talk about it. Yeah, and I was I, I immediately had to go to the bathroom. I'm I'm con- concerned that it's going to just be a train wreck, <laughs> which is why we have the the pomegranate gin fizz as a backup because that'll help clear our stomach. That should you know. that should clear you right. Out. I was going to say I I had mentioned on Twitter that there's a there's a gin fizz recipe that we have that we make for both Thanksgiving and Christmas every year. Uh, my dad is a, takes it very seriously. He's an expert at it. But is that the one with the the lie the Concentrated lemonade and what are we and, doing here? Are we doing? <laughs> I'm taking you it. You can't both, see, folks. No, we look like these double, double demons. I just spit all over myself. I'm <laughs> drooling. Oh my god! Is it the concentrated lemonade and the ice cream? No. What? One? Yeah. You oh, never you had got that goofy one. ass shit. I know. No, yeah. this this does have a dairy element, which you know. Yeah, keep mm-hmm. going. <laughs> it's ha- they use half and half. Okay. And you do add a little bit of powdered sugar, and I know how you are about sugar, mm-hmm. but I mean, you're drinking hot chocolate, which has fucking sugar all over it, so mm. I think you can get past this. Yeah. And lemon, and obviously gin, and uh, like orange curacao, and uh, white cream to cocoa. It's, it's, I'll send you the recipe. I want you to try it out. It's very, well, very delicious. I'm in. I'm in. You should try it. Yeah, my, na- my neighbor used to make one where it was concentrated, I want, I think lemonade, concentrated lemonade, uh, lemonade juice, lemonade, Ice just cream. lemonade. And then vanilla ice cream and gin. So instead of oh. the cream, you have the vanilla, and you blend it. It was freaking amazing. Huh? I've not, yeah. I've not heard that. You know, I did try to make this drink. This the one I uh, was talking about in college. 
mm -hmm. and I was missing like four ingredients. And don't ever do that. <laughs> Does, isn't there only like five? What did you just have? Gin? Oh, no. There's <laughs> no, there's like 10 things that go in it. And oh, I was okay. missing almost it's like half a of Long them. Island iced tea. I was terrible. Yeah. Awesome. It, it actually tastes really good when you get it because it's got like some lemony zip to it and it's got, mm -hmm. uh, it's really good. Anyway, when you make it the way I did, they they refer to them in my dorm room as Matt Frothies because it just came out as this like flat, <laughs> creamy, disgusting mess. Like nobody That's could great. drink it. It was gross. Anyway. That's awesome. I have a question here in our uh, inbox. Go. All right. Oh, really? It's from uh, Agent Palmer. AP. He says, Neil's not ready yet bit. That's in quotes not ready yet bit at the beginning of episode 187 had me thinking is neil the podcasting equivalent of andrew luck oh no you didn't <laughs> because of the neck beard i don't get it <laughs> maybe because you look like a civil war general that's right i always thought it was more the the um the podcast equivalent of tom cruise's character in in uh, cocktail the, no the driving movie talladega nights no that's not no the movie. days in. of thunder days of thunder like I, don't I was gonna know, say man. better just, that better better that than uh, collateral or whatever. It was. Right, right. <laughs> so I don't know. I just show up. I just show up and drive. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, that's I like I, that. I like that I, comparison. But Andrew Luck, um, what's the knock on Andrew Luck? I guess because he's, he's just not. He's hurt and this just can't quite come back. Can't get back into it. He's got that you know hmm. neck injury. Is it I neck? Don't, I don't know. Or is he shoulder? Because he's uh, shoulder. Shoulder. It was neck. Was Peyton Manning. Yeah, because he's a pretty he's a pretty decent quarterback. He's a so, great quarterback, yeah. but he's never coming back. It seems like because he's so hurt, and so he was just. But he's still to getting poke, paid, he's right? To, trying to poke the bear a little bit. Oh I no, think. he's still getting paid though, right? I mean, he's still on <laughs> he's, the roster for sure. Man, it's easy for critics from the sidelines to <laughs> complain about us to play. That's fine. Don't hate the player. I don't know. I'm, that's right, man. <laughs> if you're that upset, I don't know. Write a blog about it. <laughs> oh no, you know he's gonna now. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna start associating every podcaster he knows with a specific athlete or entertainer. Ooh. I would, I would, I would think I'm more the Colin Kaepernick of podcasting. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're just you're protesting, and I'm just out. You, I'm out. You're, no you're one's listening ball. anymore. You're being <laughs> That's right. No one's listening <laughs> yes. anymore. Yeah, that's no good. Anyway, well, thank you, Agent Palmer. Yes, thank you, sir. Maybe it's maybe it's because of the deep voice I have. It could be. It could be uh, extremely uh, extremely uh, deep. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Unlike right. me, unlike your podcast partner, who yeah. sounds like a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> Neil, I wanted to say, say that your mascara looks beautiful. Thank you. No, Matt, I know you like that drop, as I do too. <laughs> but now that we're doing mascara Minute, we need a new drop. We do. And I refuse to play the other drop until we get a new oh, one. Oh, okay, okay. I yeah. thought you were going to tell me you made one. Did you not get the whole Andrew Luck, Tom Cruise, Days <laughs> of Thunder showing thing? up? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, I have numbers. a drop. and No, that I, the drop was beautiful. I loved yes. it. It was great. Thank but you. now that we're doing NASCAR Minute, I would like a drop that like kind of goes off like the Maybelline theme mm -hmm. song or like the Clairol or something. Something fun. Oh, I see. Maybe yeah. it's NASCAR. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. That, that's I think that's a good one right there. There's Just your assignment, that. folks. If anybody wants to make one of those, we would gladly accept it. Mascara minute. If I you could somehow incorporate be... it, yeah, so that it's also still the racing bit though, but I, mixed in with yeah. I think we should do a T-shirt where it's kind of like the guy from Clockwork Orange, but in a NASCAR mm. helmet, and it'll be NASCAR minute. I like that one a lot. Yeah. That's really good. Now we need All a graphic right. designer. Fuck. God damn it. We need a team of people. Anybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll, let me we'll know put when an you're application ready. up on the site yeah you ready mm -hmm. okay let me give you go uh, this is a little bit of old news but i just wanted to recap the championship in the monster energy nascar cup series martin truex jr was your champion called it you did in the xfinity <laughs> like series it was william byron running for junior motorsports it was kind of interesting in the xfinity series there were four cars Three of them were junior motorsports cars. One wasn't. The one that wasn't, like, 22 laps in, had an electrical issue, and oh. was out. So it was like Junior's team was going to win it one way or the other. So William Byron won, and he's actually going to go drive the number five car uh, for Hendrick Motorsports because Casey Kane is out, hmm. which we'll cover next week, a little bit more about the silly season stuff. And in the trucks, Christopher Bell won championship. That's all I got. Oh. 
for your NASCAR 42 both, seconds. Both those last two are really shocking results. I did not see those coming. No. <laughs> no. The 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 William Byron, I mean, I think Elliot Sadler should have won, but mm-hmm. then there was a whole issue about a car that was in front of him didn't get out of the way and raced him a little bit hard and Sadler ended up going into the wall so he didn't win the championship and then it was like should the guy in front have gotten out of his way or should he have raced him as hard but it was kind of but look look the same thing could be said about Logano and Kyle Busch in the Monster Energy Cup because Logano r- raced Kyle pretty hard although anytime those two are going to be near each other they're not going to give the other an inch or six <laughs> right or whatever hey yeah uh, I would be so bad as a NASCAR driver because I think about the road rage I get when I'm just driving in the streets of Portland. Yeah, and I would just I would just be screaming the whole time. Like the the my pit crew would just be like, "Dude, you need to chill." Like his job is to cut you off. Right, <laughs> right. I I think you would. Uh, I think eventually. I mean, I think at first maybe you'd be like really upset, but then when you realize like these other guys and gals, as you like to say, mm-hmm. are driving these huge machines that can put you in the wall at any second, you're probably like. Oh, okay, I, I'm mm. gonna just, I'm just gonna drive here, or I'll just fucking wreck them <laughs> before I'm gonna wreck the whole field before they can get to me, and then that's it. I retire. I won my first race. I would I'm be out. a great teammate. Like, who wants a guy who's gonna bust up half the field, and mm-hmm. then you just got to beat the rest? There you go. Simple as. Anyway, and then you can have that nickname Matador in so many ways. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Andrew Luck, but you are a fan of Tom Brady. Uh, fan. I think I'm more obsessed with. Mm. Yeah, fan is, is like, kind of fan is for the lay people. Right. This is I like am, um this is like the gal and I said gal again. Mm-hmm. It's like the gal in Ten Things I Hate About You and he goes, I know you like Shakespeare. And she's like, We're involved. Right. <laughs> That's to- you, and Tom. Totally. Never saw the movie, heard it's awesome, but yeah. Uh, of course you didn't see it. <laughs> Pour one out for Heath Ledger. Oh. Anyway. Joke. Yes. Your We're man talk Tom about Brady. Tom? He's yeah. having another. He's having another good season. Boring. I, no, Matt. He just has good seasons. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like yeah. It's kind of like saying, "Oh, look, the water's wet." Yeah, we know. Right. Well, just let's Tom, just Tom Brady. Let's take a peek behind the curtain and see right. just how he's doing this. I like to think of it taking a peek under the sheets, but yeah. you go with what you need. Maybe under a kilt. Uh, well, you'd be disappointed if you took a peek under the sheets, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I found this on Deadspin, and it was talking about Brady and his trainer, who's mm-hmm. like his bestie. So, as you know, he said he wants to play till he's forty-five and win right. at least a couple more Super Bowls. Why not? What is he? Is he forty straight at forty? Or is I think he... he's. I think he's forty. I think he just turned forty or turned okay. forty last year All right. or on the off in the off season. I should and... know his birthday. I have it tattooed on me. <laughs> Hold on, let me look. It's on my ass cheek, though, so it's going to yeah. take a minute. Can you look I got to find me? a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a new book. This article is a little bit, maybe like a month old. But anyway, he has a new book called The TB12 Method. I don't know if okay. you have an autographed copy of that yet or not. Is that like the rhythm method? Mm, well, maybe. All right. In it, he talks about his training methods, uh, mm-hmm. which were kind of cooked up by his advisor and business partner, Alex Guerrero who has claimed in the past, by the way, that he can cure cancer and concussions. Oh, I should talk to him. <laughs> you should. But this is more about preventing them, really, than curing oh, them. But the, yeah. the cancer cure was something he called uh, Supreme Greens that he like peddled back in the early 2000s. Okay. And it turned out to be a total fraud. <laughs> oh, <I'm> shocked. <laughs> and then the concussion stopper is what really it is, is this supplement called NeuroSafe, which I think Brady uses and, and backs up. Somehow this thing is supposed to keep your brain from rattling around when a 285 pound guy destroys you. I I would feel better if you just gave me a giant pillow and said, just wrap this around your dome. Well, that's, and that's still, you can, it's like the old, you know, they've talked about this so many times. You can do whatever you want with that helmet. It can help a little bit, but your brain's still inside your head and your brain's going to rattle around. And that's the problem. Yeah. If if your head is moving, no matter what it's in Uh and it stops suddenly. Your brain's yes. going to bounce off your skull. That's why right. you need a real thick pad so it just slows. Oh, yeah, like a sumo down. helmet. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so here's a paragraph from the book. I want you to pay close attention. Every day, Brady wakes up at 6 in the morning and immediately drinks 20 ounces of purified water augmented with TB12 electrolytes, which, as he tells us, contain the 72 trace minerals generally lost in perspiration. Okay. As, 
As a result, he says he is so well hydrated that even with adequate exposure to the sun, I won't get sunburned. And he presumes that the muscles under his skin look like beautiful tenderloins instead of shriveled jerky. <laughs> okay. Well, that's something. I mean, you get up about the same time. You, know, you get up well. Oh early, no, I'm up. He's you're slacking, man. You're, you're, I'm a, up. you're at work. I've I've already freaking drank sixty thousand <laughs> liters of water, <laughs> and went around the world in right. my shriveled up tenderloins. To be fair, he's on the East Coast, so technically he does get up earlier than you, because he's three hours ahead. But that's true. You guys are in the same same zone, and I love the um, that he thinks. I mean, I, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that just really w- hydrating yourself well mm-hmm. and then going and sitting on like a fucking hot like beach in Mexico without sunscreen is not going to end well. Uh, well, a lot of people don't know this about actually Mexicans and like Jamaicans and people in the Caribbean. The reason they don't sunburn is because they drink so much water. Is that what it is? That's exactly what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's, it actually started in the, uh, the the horn of Africa, as they like to say. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why South Africans, the, the white South Africans, are never sunburned. They because drink so they much drink water. so much water. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I didn't, <laughs> okay. did, I'm surprised you must have been absent that day. I guess I missed that day. But mm-hmm. uh, well, and I was, I'm curious, do you, would you describe your muscles as beautiful tenderloins? Um, do you think that's what uh, they look like underneath that skin? Yeah, I mean tenderloin. I'd like to go more. I think I'm. I'm I think a a, a nicely marbled tri tip myself. Mm. That's what my muscles look like. <laughs> there yes. you go. Not shriveled jerky. <laughs> no, but I mean jerky's not bad. No, I mean I think think of it this way. Let's say we were in a plane flying somewhere, which would okay. make sense because we're in the plane and I'm we in. crash and there's mm-hmm. no food and like I'm dead and you're like all I got to eat. Is well, first, of, hold on, hold on. First of all, because you've had your neuro safe, you will not get a concussion from the crash landing. So that's oh good. no, my brain's you're already fine. off to a good. My start. brain's solid, yeah, mm-hmm. and I don't have cancer. Just so you know, <laughs> no, now I won't be getting it anytime soon. If you don't have a way to, <laughs> if you don't have a way to cook it, would you rather want raw tri tip or raw tenderloin or beef jerky? So you're this is you're thinking ahead to cannibalism. Yeah, like I, you want to be very ahead edible. To cannibalism. Yeah, you want to be yeah. very edible for somebody who I want to take care of my friends. Yeah, right. I want to take care of my friends. I get it. That makes. I'm sense. assuming the crash is my fault. Also, that's why I'm <laughs> looking out for you. <laughs> well, I think. Well, I, I think you're fucked if you have to eat me because I think my muscles just look like old bean bags or something. <laughs> They're very tight. Uh, he trains about four hours a day, same as me. Mm-hmm. And uh, on most days, he does pliability with Guerrero, his buddy who, with hands capable of generating 50 newtons of force in a single finger, which is about 11 pounds, uh-huh. applies targeted pressure to Brady's muscles. Oh, I'll bet he does. <laughs> oh, yes. Brady really <laughs> likes Guerrero. Push harder. Yeah. <laughs> on the rare occasions when, this is a quote, on the rare occasions when I don't have the benefit of working with Alex, end quote, he either does partner pliability or goes solo with a jar of coconut oil uh-oh. Uh-oh, coconut oil again. Yep, it's back. <laughs> he applies himself and a TB12 vibrating sphere. Dude. Like, that's like a vibrating egg. Yes, it's, oh, this is This is, this stra- is my I mean, dream like, come true. <laughs> Benoit Brady. Well, it's like, it's cool you want to beat it. Like, don't, you don't need to mask it in this whole, like, I got a guy who can push real hard and I'm using coconut oil to rub my body and I've got this vibrating sphere. I mean, that sounds like some sort of ALB type thing. I agree 100%. I love Tom Brady. (laughs) He eats abstemiously. That's a fun word. With few portion sizes bigger than the palm of his hand, but also with a purpose to maintain the alkalinity of his body. You know, you complain about your dietary restrictions. Look what Mm -hmm. this guy's going through. I I eat with purpose too, like to fill my gut. <laughs> Be happy. He sounds like no fun. Like, could you imagine the Brady's hosting a barbecue and you go over there and there's just the grill's on, but there's actually nothing that ever goes on it. It's Which just, is funny because like, when he came vegetables. into the league, it was exactly opposite with him. The first <laughs> time he met Robert Kraft, he was walking through the halls of their practice facility, holding a large pizza box, eating it, and he looks at him and says, "Hey, thanks a lot for drafting me." <laughs> That was it. Him and Drew Bledsoe used to go to the clubs all the time and freaking get yeah, hammered. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Fuck yeah, they did. So. So anyway, uh, he sleeps. Here we go. You were talking you know, about peeking, at, peeking into the sheet. Yeah. He sleeps in the same determinedly therapeutic fashion, re- repairing to bed 
at nine each night, kind of like you, mm -hmm. in a room uncontaminated by either technology or pet dander. Not like you. No. No, <laughs> I, I do believe that you should sleep in a room that doesn't have electronics in it, though. Yes, but the dander is lot. all over your shit. I am the dander. You're the dander. Who could chew? <laughs> he keeps a glass of water by his bedside. Sure, we all do. And sleeps famously in TB12 bioceramic recovery wear, which is also for sale from TB12, and which Brady also considers part of a movement, quote unquote, the tech enabled apparel and sleepwear movement. So, do you think Giselle's like, hey, Bought some lingerie. I want you to come check it out. Let's come to bed. And he's like, no, 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 no. You know I got to go to that room by myself and sleep in my fucking nerdy pajamas. <laughs> no, you know what I think he does is that it's like 9 o'clock and that Alex guy check calls him up and, you know, they FaceTime and he's like, I'm in bed. And then as soon as the phone uh, or Alex hangs up, freaking the phone flies, Brady takes his crap off and goes into the <laughs> big luxury bed with his wife, freaking eating popcorn, watching movies, having a good old time. Then in the morning, it's like the alarm goes off at 530, he goes back and puts his magic pajamas on, right. crawls into bed, and Alex shows up all freaking glistened up and ready to go with his freaking <laughs> vibrating sphere and his coconut oil. And Brady's like, oh, that was the best sleep ever. Oh, my God. This vibrating sphere is yeah. so good. <laughs> Oh, uh, so I just, I, I mean, we've talked a little bit about this before, but it, being him and having this regimen would just be, oh my God, I just would, I, I understand he's doing it for a reason and it's obviously paying dividends. Oh yeah. Uh, although some would argue there's other dudes on his team who have tried to buy into this and got hurt. So right. It's, right. It's, he seems to be the golden child. Yeah. And I, I like that he's doing it, but there's there's a difference between doing it and people ask you and you're like, yeah, this is the crazy thing I do. And now that he's trying to market it and capitalize, which, Hey, I get that too, but it's like, eh, it's a little different when you just can't say, you know, go to my website. My diet is there. The stuff I take is there and you can go freaking buy it at GNC. I would just suggest buying the good stuff. That's it. But when it's like, Oh, it's my special 72 amino acid, you know, trace mineral freaking cum pellets. It's kind right. of, yeah. <laughs> I want to know if you can get that vibrating sphere because I might be in on that. Um, uh, yeah. Fuck a slap a reasons there's several logo on that shit and we'll resell it. I like it. <laughs> so when are you going to start this routine? Uh, not going to happen. However, I <laughs> at, uh, beginning the first of the year, I am I am going to slightly change my diet again. Oh. I'm, I'm going to go full keto. What does that mean? Uh, fleas, just fleas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's uh like super, super low carb, almost no carb, and super, super low sugar, almost no sugar, uh, but high fat, high protein. Sounds sort of like hell. No carbs? No carbs. You hate carbs. I mean, you love carbs, I love but you carbs, hate carbs. But I hate carbs, yeah. God but but it. like some of the, like I can have, you know, bacon wrapped cheese. Yeah, but that doesn't do any good. Doesn't do me any good. Well, that's true. Because that fucking bacon. Is that a oh. goddamn overhyped bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started again. Mm -hmm. uh, we both like to travel, would you say? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go on airplanes, you crash them. And, and then you eat I, me. And then I eat you. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some accommodations that I wanted to share because they can play, you know, a we've, big role in your. We've been to Portland together. We've been to Napa together. That's true, but in those what, cases, one of us was traveling, the other one was not. What's our next trip? Well, I think we need to go to Reno, Vegas, or Tahoe, or Vegas, or Vegas. Could do Vegas. Mm -hmm. Something. I don't know. We'll figure it out, or maybe one of these. Okay. So there's two that I want to share with you that I found. The first one is in Switzerland. Have you been? You've you've not been to Europe. No, I have not. Okay. Well, so my people are from Europe. You know, I am right. Jewish. But you, yeah. personally, have not been no, to Europe. No, no. Okay, so Switzerland, lovely country. Uh, I found this article on theinsider.com. So I was going to ask you, by the way, when you when you look for a hotel, are there certain am amenities that you're kind of after when you look for a hotel? Like a fitness room or a swimming pool or a whatever? Swimming pool, no, but yeah, I do like there to be a fitness room. Uh, and usually it just has to be clean and safe. That's really the two and, okay. and and preferably a bathroom, like a private bathroom, bathroom in the room. Right. Yeah. En suite. Right. As they say. Mm -hmm. What about walls? Do you like to have walls in your hotel room? Uh, I, Matt, I'm, <laughs> I like to break down the walls. Like <laughs> Motley Crue would say, take my fist and break down walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I, no, no. Well, I, walls are so 
restrictive. They are. Yeah. But they can be helpful like when you have that ensuite bathroom. Yeah, whatever. I'm, I know what I'm doing in there. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Ain't going to change if there's a wall or not. <laughs> does it kneel shit in the woods? That's basically what's going to happen here. Apparently he does in that room, you know. Welcome to the open air hotel called Noel Stern, which eliminates walls and a roof altogether. Isn't Noel G- Howard's like younger cousin or something? <laughs> I think so. Noel, so in German, the hotel's name translates to zero stars. Oh, so, zero. Ha- so basically it's Howard Star. Wow. His stern. Anyway. The star, quote, the star is not the hotel, but each guest, the hotel's co founder, Daniel Charbonnier, maybe, tells Tech Insider, we got rid of all the walls and the only thing that's left is you and your experience. <laughs> okay, guy. <laughs> so so there's no walls at, in the hotel at all? It's just one no, big room? you can click on the link I sent you and you can see what these pictures look like. Okay. Because these people are out in the middle of the Swiss Alps. I, lo- here, I'll tell you. I'll explain more. Located uh, 6,463 feet above sea level, the Nolstern sits in the middle of the Swiss Alps. It costs about 210 bucks a night. What the fuck? See what I'm saying? No, no, it's just a is, fucking floor with a bed this in the is middle of the goddamn not mountains. not at all what I thought. This is a joke. <laughs> the hotel has no walls, roof, or bathroom. Only a queen bed with a pair of nightstands and lamps. A public bathroom is about a five-minute walk down the mountain. What the? I mean, no, you got to is... fucking go in the middle of the night. You got to walk down there. Fuck. I'd rather have a freaking tent. <laughs> all right. This is not. Because this... you know you're going to wake up and have to go, and you're just going to pee behind that bed. Oh, dude, I'm not even getting it. And if this is what they're giving me, I'm just going to pee in the bed. I mean, come on. <laughs> it offers panoramic views of the mountains and the stars at night. And as he says, Switzerland becomes the hotel. No. Uh, but like a normal hotel, room service in the form of a personal butler comes to the guests. He stays in a nearby cabin, which is where he gets dressed and prepares guest meals, including dinner and breakfast in bed. So he gets a cabin. He gets a look, scroll down. Yeah. He's basically in a fucking barn. Yeah. And that <laughs> looks better than the freaking. Well, of course. Because it has Ikea walls bedroom. and a roof and a bathroom. Jesus. <laughs> and this is the Swiss Alps. So, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing this is only open for a certain amount of time per year. Oh, no. These dumbasses. It's, it's 24-7, 365. You just bring a shovel. You're, well, and you're cold as balls up there well you're you, gonna get well, you on. bring your freaking tb12 magic panties and your warmest freaking <laughs> uh it does say though for if if the weather is bad you can you can cancel last minute so at least they give you that that you know yeah that's leniency. nice of them but i mean could you imagine this guy coming up with this and the people are like you want me to, you want us to build what where what yeah. and that butler's like i don't think this is a good idea but i'll do it i'm desperate yeah i mean he's making steaks Two, and shit for them he's not fucking around 200 bucks a night yeah no. To sleep outside. No. Or you could just go camping. Just rent a rent a freaking trailer. Rent a trailer, or you could just go with a tent and and get a, like a little spot somewhere, res- reserve a little spot somewhere in the mountains, and that probably costs. I mean, as the as they say in the marketing world, a fraction of the cost. Right. It's one of my favorite. Yeah. Bullshit terms. Anyway, okay, that's not. You're not into that. You're not going to stay there. No. How about Japan? Want to go to Japan? Yes, we are planning to actually go to Japan. Are you? When I say we, Annalise is supposed to be planning it, so I don't know what's oh. going on with that. We were going to go. You were gonna say, when I say like we, I mean years. you and me. <laughs> yeah, we we are going. You are taking me to Japan. I cleared it with your wife. It's all that, good. All right. Okay, yeah. man. So this shit is bananas. I mean, I, I know the last one was kind of silly, but this one is even more so. So businessinsider.com is where I found this. The article is titled, A Japanese Hotel Run Almost Entirely by Robots is expanding to 100 locations. Here's what it's like to stay there. I would imagine this the, is... Did you, no, I didn't. I, did, I have not because I, I enjoy this so much more when I hear you <laughs> explain it first it. and then I check it. Because if I All already right. know, then I'm like, oh, you know. So yeah, the, is, pictures, the pictures really do it's illustrate... More, it's about my enjoyment here. Of so. course, of course. That's what this whole podcast is. In fact, from now on, when we give the little blurb at the beginning, mm-hmm. we should just call it, this is a podcast where Matt tries to entertain Neil. That's, I like it. <laughs> In the southwestern city of Sasebo, maybe, Japan, a hotel run almost entirely by robots has been so successful in its two-year run that owners are now inspired to open 100 more locations around Japan. I like it. Hideo Sawada has run the aptly named Weird Hotel as part of an amusement park since July 2015, but business has been so good that Sawada's travel agency, his company, HIS, 
CO, plans to expand to several more cities in the coming years and overseas within the next five. Having robots in charge of the reception and placing robots everywhere, we aim to make it the most efficient hotel in the world. Well, I'm sure it's going to be efficient, Hideo. <laughs> so this is this is your number one spot to visit. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> you should fire up these pictures. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, they're, they're loading up now. So it shows the reception desk. There's a bunch of captions here. It says, to check in, arriving guests can either talk with a humanoid robot who speaks Japanese or a dinosaur who speaks English. <laughs> I would that, Tell me that wouldn't be fun, though. <laughs> You're like, hey, Dino. Well, why like, does the dinosaur speak English? <laughs> uh, next caption shows the dinosaur, and he's wearing a fucking bellman's hat, by the way. <laughs> While dashing, dinosaurs and bow ties can't make beds. Housekeeping staff at the Weird Hotel are still very much human. Yeah, I would, I would imagine they are gonna. You can't have the robots making the beds. Like uh, dinosaurs suck at the hospital corners. <laughs> Uh, to make sure no one steals the prehistoric receptionist or any other robot, humans are on staff as a security, as security monitoring the hotel at all times. So they're there yeah, and they're watching, but mm -hmm. they can't be ours to check you in because they got the robots doing that. Uh, fair weird. enough. Weird. The hotel staff waits patiently for guests to complete the check-in process. They have to. They're robots. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Floor robots also emerging in Japanese airports to assist weaker travelers. That's kind of harsh. Help carry guest luggage to the rooms. And these things are basically just like motorized little carts that you put your bag on. So they're kind of not exactly bellmen. Guests can leave their luggage in a cloakroom manned by a robot that probably wishes it was programmed for a more exciting job. <laughs> nice. Uh, the cloakroom robot can store unused luggage until checkout or for eternity if it so chooses. So it looks like it's out of an 80s movie, this thing. Like, mm -hmm. do you remember the movie? Um, you probably didn't see it. Mm -hmm. The Manhattan Project. Oh, amazing, amazing movie. You didn't, didn't see it. it. Okay, well, there's this, this kid tries to build a nuclear bomb, and he goes to this this place, this lab, where John Lithgow works, and kind of checks it out, and then he breaks in there, and he, <laughs> spoiler alert, 35 years later, <laughs> and he, he, have to, he has to use, like, all these little robotic things to, like, get the plutonium out and stuff, and that's exactly what these pictures look like of that fucking robot getting your, you know, getting your luggage out. Hideo Sawada says the... Saved labor costs can keep the weird hotel affordable. He hopes to add 1,000 more similar hotels in the future. 1,000! Wow. Well, I mean, if they, if they get it dialed in, yeah, this would be... This is just the fucking beginning of the end. With robots making up 90% of the total staff. Each room in Sasebo comes stocked with Thule. Did you see this fucking creature? A hotel concierge doll that can help guests find nearby restaurants, recommend events, and acclimate them to sleeping with one eye open. <laughs> is, is that that little thing on the nightstand? It looks like Hello Kitty or something, yeah, but like yeah. creepy as fuck. Yeah. Like you roll over, gotta pee. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Alexa with a face. Yeah. The face of terror. <laughs> yeah. If I get an Alexa, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like inside of a freaking stuffed animal, so it looks like I'm talking so to a you, stuffed animal all the yeah, time. Yeah, you. Right. I think that's a good idea. Animate it. In the second location, rooms are manned by Tapia, Tapia, a colorful cross-eyed egg that can control room temperature and change channels on the TV. <laughs> be, hey, uh, Tapioca, is there any wrestling on? <laughs> or Tapioca, I was watching that porn. Please turn yeah. back. <laughs> tapioca, who's the star of this porn? I've never recognized him. <laughs> right. I've never read this thing. I've never recognized him. Obviously. Yeah, that, that would be good. Then yeah. they're like Peter Peter North. Yeah. Yeah. He's always Peter North. True to form, the second location also includes a life size dinosaur in the lobby and a roving recycling bin for guests to keep the hotel tidy. Did you see this fucking roving recycl roving I, recycling roving? That I did not see. It looks like one of those old plastic wind up toys where the feet just barely move, you know? Oh, that's what that was. That's what it looks like. Oh, okay. <laughs> for just 80 bucks the general public can spend a night among the machines that's not bad you gonna do it i would do it you could stay there like two and a half nights compared to the fucking swiss alps yeah with no walls and no bathroom i would do it the only thing is i'd probably get myself in trouble because just like siri or alexa i'd be asking these freaking dolls all these questions all the time before i know it it's like why is our bill three thousand dollars like well you ordered freaking everything you could <laughs> i'll at least watch this bring yeah. me <laughs> yeah hey tapioca <laughs> right can you make it 300 degrees in here <laughs> oh man well so speaking of travel i was gonna ask you first of all do you like living on earth neil 
if it wasn't for the Earthlings, I think I'd like mm-hmm. it more. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's you... not like the other places I've lived, but it's cool. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, do you sometimes look up to the stars and think, God, I'd like to live up there? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Daydream a little bit? A little bit. I might have an option for you. I found this on, well, it was on OregonLive.com and then CNN.com as well, but it's called Asgardia. It has no territory. Is in... Thor there? It sounds like it, doesn't it? What is it? Isn't that what it is? Uh, it, it does have a Norse mythology asgard is the city of the city in the sky is the city or the country of the gods so it's based off that but it's not asgard it's asgardia oh okay gotcha slight wrinkle here it has no territory and very little bureaucracy but asgardia is one of the fastest growing countries in the world its citizens plan to live on a large space station in earth's orbit interesting Mm -hmm. sound kooky it's serious enough undertaking that a nonprofit organization called NGO Asgardia has 50 salaried staffers working on tasks ranging from elections to passports and the space nation is seeking United Nations membership. I like it. So we're moving along already. Yeah. Asgardia is the brainchild of Russian scientist and entrepreneur Igor Donald Ashur- Trump. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Igor Asherbeli. I'm going to say Asherbeli. That's probably way wrong. Who announced his formation last October. He says he plans to launch space arcs into Earth's orbit by 2025 to beginning turning the fully fledged and independent nation into an actual place. That is not far away. No. So this sounds like an aggressive timeline. That's less than 10 years. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good. Thank you. you. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking math whiz every week. That's right. So with decree number one, Oh, that's like that's like CK one. Smells great. A little fruity, mm. but awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have nothing for you on that one. <laughs> With degree number one on January 20th, 2017, Asher Bailey, if that's how you say it, made himself the head of the nation. Oh, shocking. Oh, the guy boy. who invented it's like, you know what? I'll just run it for now. We'll figure something Fair out. Fair enough. I mean, if he's the if he's the guy, he's the guy. I'm, I'm surprised Fair. he didn't change his name to Thor. <laughs> he should. He might still. So I got some fun facts for you. The number of Earthlings who have expressed an interest in becoming citizens uh, amounts to more than a half a billion in oh, 217 countries. I would do it. I would if I could just if like signing up was free. I would sign up. Well, I'll get you got some details here on what you got to do. So All I'll right. give you the details, and you decide what you want to do. Okay. So you become citizens. You to become citizens, you have to vote to ratify the Constitution, which is basically like pledging your fucking allegiance to this Ash, Asher Bailey guy. Okay giving him what they call broad powers. So today there's 114,000 Asgardians from 204 countries. A population dropped from 211,000 in June when voting to determine the details of the Constitution began. So we've got a lot of skeptics. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, like, you know what? Yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. The Constitution states, <clears throat> I feel like I should, this should be written on scrolls or something. Asgardia's Constitution defines the nation as a, quote, space kingdom. I like it. So after the parliamentary elections, which has 4,000 people up for offices, so if you want to get in on those elections, you better hurry. All right. They will receive official citizenship documents. Uh, you have until March 29th to submit your application to become parliamentary parliamentarian. Okay. So you just don't you don't want to do that, though. You just probably don't want to hold office. You just want to get in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, if I could run, maybe I could have my own little city, you know? That's true. Yeah. That's a good point. Nellyville. Or at least Nellyville. <laughs> it's getting hot in there. Mm-hmm. It will only be possible to provide ID cards and eventually passports to those who have voted for the Constitution and have identified themselves as real people. <laughs> so no, no bots. So tapioca can't go. <laughs> Tapioca's out. Uh, you are required to pick up your documents in person at their offices in Vienna. So you got to go to Austria to get uh, your documents. It sounds so good. Go. Yeah. There's an excuse for you to travel to Europe. Oktoberfest. As Guardia's philosophy is to be a mirror of humanity in space, but without earthly division into states, religions, and nations. And as Guardia, we are all just earthlings. That's right. But, so no, but, but nobody, really. nobody but white people is what they're saying. <laughs> Probably, and you're not earthlings anymore because you're, you're in you're our space. space kingdomlings. <laughs> you're Asgardia. That's right. Their mission is to defend humanity. Thank you. Let me ask you a quick question: If you're born on Asgard. Mm. Are you not an Earthling? That's I think so. I think you would not be an Earthling. How cool would that be? I mean, yeah, you're almost like you couldn't run for president. Put it that way. You're literally <laughs> an alien. 
You are. Yeah. But this is a long way off. 10 years. I don't know. 10 years, at least. It's probably going to be more like 100 or never. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like you're going to stay in that robot hotel. You're going to be watching the tapioca tapioca is going to turn on the news and then you're going to see like holy crap, it's real and you're just going to you're just going to break. You're just going to break. Well, and uh, as I explain this a little bit more, mm-hmm. there, there's some there's some concerns about the power they could yield if this actually works. And tapioca is just going to turn to you and go, champ, don't worry about it. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. boss. Yeah. How 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 we doing, boss? How are we doing? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, so this says it means literally. It means it. So it means that literally to defend humanity. Ash Asher Bale a Bailey. God damn it. Says he and his fellow Asgardian citizens will develop a shield to protect Earth from space threats such as incoming asteroids, space debris, and coronal mass ejections from the sun, which could wipe out our power grids. So let me see if I got this right. There's Asgard, Asgardians, Thor, uh, and now there's S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yes. It sounds a little marvelous to me. (laughs) It does Yeah. If they start calling themselves agents. Yeah. (laughs) Right. This is a league of justice. Oh, Sorry, Jesus. And then we're jumping around there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep those straight. It sounds like they're trying to build... You remember the force field on Scarif in Rogue One? Yes, that it I saw. It sounds like that's what they're trying to build. <laughs> yes. Like this thing that goes all the way around, and there's just going to be this hole that you get to go in and out of to get, you know... Or was it space. was that other was it Elysium? What was the movie where Elysium was the one where they just had? Well, Elysium is kind of like this. Yeah. Okay. They, it was like all the fucking posh rich people lived right, up there because right. the Earth was a piece of shit. Right. And you had to like you know they were trying to there get like, there you know. to get some medicine or good right weed or something. You could get immediately cured if you went up there. Yeah. Like whatever you whatever your ill was. Right. Uh, but we're not going to get into healthcare policy right now. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Asgardia's core legal principle, Asgardia does not interfere in relations between states on Earth. Mm, mm. I don't know. It seems like you're going to start wielding some power here and you're going to start doing some shit with it. I love, I love your takes. on it. You're just like, nope. Uh, I don't know. You people are already screwing with my head. Because people are corrupt and abuse power. And when they get it, they turn into monsters. I mean, mm-hmm. this is what happens. And so this is what's going to happen in this case. Hey, if don't this don't make me go to- off on guys again. On jackals. Oh. Tool talk? Tool talk. <laughs> Tool talk with Neil. <laughs> Tool time. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, there's going to be, they're going to either say, well, I guess we would know, but there's going to be an asteroid hurling towards Earth, and they're going to be like, you guys going to give us all the fucking dough and, like, all the power, or else we're going to let this asteroid through. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, but then they could be like, all right, well, without all the dough and all our power, we're nothing anyway, so we'll go ahead and let it through. Well, that's true. Because they're going to need they're going to need food and stuff. Call their bluff. Yeah. Good. Be like, Smart. screw you, now Thor. Got yeah. Now you've Freaking, got it. That's we got a Hulk. That's that. Uh, what do they call it? The symbiotic. The, the nuclear. Um, it's like mutual. Oh right, right. I was just whatever whatever it is where you can destroy each other so nobody does anything. Right. That thing. War games. Whatever that's called. Tic tac toe. <laughs> we're we're really masters of verbal yeah. craft here. We we know what we mean. Uh, right. We're just not intelligent enough to pull it it's out of our brains. Some, somebody out there is going, it's mutual. Bleh. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Masturbation. <laughs> Maybe if I figure it out, I'll name this episode that. <laughs> masturbation? Masturbation, for sure. The space nation's biggest problem so space far. Space nation masturbation. Space nation masturbation. <laughs> there you go. Done. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the the Their biggest problem so far? You want to guess? Uh, No women want to go. Bingo! Was that seriously? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's not none, but it's a shortage of women. Oh, uh, boy. It says that only 16% of the people who have signed up are women. So Welcome to Alaska. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Alaska. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of it. He just go. The guy goes on to talk about how it's going to be difficult because no one's ever tried to do this before. It's like, well, yeah, no shit. So, <laughs> you're, are you gonna? You're gonna? You're gonna move? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Once it's fully baked. You're yeah. not ready to commit yet. No, but I think I'm going to go as a girl. <laughs> yeah. and then I think I'm going to say I'm a girl and then just... More likely to get in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then I could yeah, just right. like... Uh, yeah, I just just dominate the, the girls. <laughs> dominate. <laughs> My name is Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> Nelly. I'll go with Nelly. 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 They, that's that's uh, gender neutral. The I don't ma- know what that is. The mayor of Nellyville. <laughs> That is all we have for this week, Neil. Even the paper boys deliver out the back of a range. 
Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank know, you for talking. I, well, I, you know, and I want to thank you for sitting there while I try to entertain you. I, I, <laughs> I got my money's worth today. You good. did a good job. I think, I think you earned yourself another week. <laughs> All I think right. so. You know what? Let's just treat it like a contract. Like All a right. sports contract, and we're just going to extend. We're on a you know ten right. day contract or whatever. Right. So we got another show out of it. I like that. Uh, you can find us at reasonsareseveral dot com. Uh, go uh, subscribe and review us on iTunes, and you can tweet at us as I mentioned at the top of the show at reasons are and at angels freak seven. You can also email us if you have any uh, products you'd like us to review mm-hmm. at uh, reasonsareseveral at gmail dot com. If you are the maker of a vibrating sphere, let us know. Well, you saw I forwarded you another mail, right? Yes, I did. I did. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know think if that gonna, was, they, they, they didn't seem like they were going to just offer no, shit. No, and they were they, they were like big time, big money stuff. And and they sent a follow up like ten minutes later with like basically saying the same thing on top of the mail they already sent. Right. Very aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Aggressive came porn. From, aggressive porn marketing. It came from like Yuri at Asgardia dot com or something. Right. Like anyway. Right. All right. Well, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you.